Welcome to User and I, the channel where I explore all things UX and UI design. And today we're going in on our first Gestalt principle, and that is similarity. So as I mentioned in the intro video, we're going to be walking through an explanation, and then we're going to be discussing some examples, and then I'm going to show you a real life example of how I've used it in one of my designs. So basically this principle is all about relationship and characteristics and sharing visual characteristics. Items that share a visual characteristic are more related than items that don't. In a nutshell, we're talking about things that share the same shape or things that could share the same color, things that could share the same font. So some of the characteristics we're thinking about is color, shape, size, font, orientation, and of course, movement. So let's take this for example. We have two shapes arranged in a various order, but what do you think your brain immediately says? Does it say it's three rows or four columns? If you said four columns, you'd be correct. And that's because your brain is associating the similarities between the shapes. Even though three rows do exist, what our brain naturally sees are four columns because of the similarity between the shapes. Now this changes a bit when we're starting to talk about color. If we decide to color one of these rows, our brain immediately starts to think there's three rows here. And we can see that even if we change the order of the colors in each shape, our brain decides to group these because the similarity of color between them jumps out over the shapes. So in a nutshell, understanding this principle helps us as designers communicate relationships and hierarchies depending on the user case. So let's take this example from Argos. We have a Black Friday cell, so they have a continuation of color across all six tiles. They have a continuation of font across all six tiles and they have a continuation of color when it comes to a call to action. But overall, looking at this area on the website, our brain immediately knows that all these items are related, even if we were to hide the Black Friday is here title. Because of the size, because of the shape, our brains will immediately know that these are related. We can also see the same here. This is another section of the Argus website. We immediately see the two tiles at the top are bigger than the three at the bottom. So the last example is one that I've personally designed. This is a screenshot from the landing page of my side project I'm currently working on. And the whole idea is to encourage busy professionals to log their meals into an app, set reminders to prevent their foods from expiring. That's the value proposition. But using color here, what I've done is that as soon as you see fridge reminders, your brain immediately jumps to save your food from expiring. It goes from the business name directly to the value proposition. I've also deliberately used the same pink on the part of the logo at the top and they join the waiting list button. So your brain immediately jumps to different sections of this page, but to the areas that I want there to be an action or where I'm communicating the biggest value on the page. That's it for similarity. As we've reached the end of the video, I hope that you've learned something new. I hope that you've seen examples of things that you didn't quite know your brain was doing, but now understand. And most importantly, I hope you know how to use it in your next design. This is going to be part of an eight episode series. We've just finished number one. Stick with me for next week and we'll move on to proximity.